So based on on that, I mean, you've been preaching, you know, the keep it simple, stupid process pretty well and tie data to it. And um, if you could maybe summarize anything you're seeing different going on uh, in the industry, you know, we've talked, you already mentioned it's the, you know, the phishing and I, our pen testers, phishing, right? It's a common thing is ways in, patching, missing, password reuse, password spraying. Um, Anything you're seeing in developments in the last six months on that? Anything new or are you seeing people getting better more? What are you seeing? Everybody's as terrible as always. Uh, yeah. You know, it doesn't change. That's the sad thing of being around 34 years. It doesn't really ever get better. It just seems to get worse. But I, let me say that actually, I don't think I'm an expert in anything, but I think one of my small talents is that I, because of being in the field for 34 years, I recognize growing trends faster than the next person. And so, uh, you know, like a couple of years ago in 2019, 2020, I saw that ransomware was starting to morph to the, the double extortion data exfiltration phase. And I called, I wrote a, I wrote a talk called uh, ransom, nuclear ransomware 2.0. Well, I just started talking about ransomware 3.0. And what is it? I'm starting to see the trend and it seems very likely to happen that the ransomware groups and there's. We think there's at least 100 of them or 200 of them. There's, there's at least 100 ransomware groups and about 200 different ransomware software families coming out of that 100 group. And they're everything from individuals to you know corporate gangs and everything, nation states in between. But it seems pretty clear to me that they're starting to do all kinds of hacking well beyond ransomware and data exfiltration. They're starting to do a lot of denial of service attacks. They're starting to do data exfiltration without doing any encryption. Uh, you know, because when you encrypt data, you've got to sneak that into the, 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 the ransomware stagers into the environment, get them across all the machines and then fire them all off on once. Mm -hmm. uh, and during any of those times, you can be detected by antivirus or endpoint detection response software. So a lot of the guys are finding it easy break in and just use copy commands <laughs> to copy, <laughs> figure out what the crown jewels are this company cares about, copy it across the internet, and then tell them if you don't pay us, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna release this data publicly. And they're not doing the encryption at all, and they're still being paid at about similar rates, right. uh, which is kind of incredible. They're doing denial of service attacks. They're doing crypto mining. They're doing. They're using your networks as a botnet to attack other people. They're, you know, they're using your network to send out phishing, spear phishing emails to your trusted business partner. So. We've seen all kinds of activities and they're, they're kind of breaking into a place and going, okay, what can we do? Uh, you know, what kind of things can we do? Where should we go? That sort of stuff. And they're using the admin tools. They'll look around and go, okay, admin uses remote desktop uh, protocol, RDP. We'll use that. Or admin's using log me in or admin's using VNC. And so they'll start to use the same types of tools to log in and to move around. So it's very hard to be detected doing that. And then now, uh, so what I call it ransomware trio, which is they've now kind of become these hacker for hire gangs. You know, you want to get information on your competitor, we'll do it. You know, if you want to, you know, what and some of them are breaking in and just installing crypto mining, you know, bots to make money off of crypto. So, so I call that kind of ransomware three O. And if you look at the trend, that's it's pretty clear. This is what they're doing. There's pressure on, um, so, you know, after the colonial pi the colonial pipeline attack. Uh, by that, by dark side or our evil, evil rival, whatever you want to call it, that was kind of the turning point because the ransomware created a disruption in the fuel system here, and the president got involved. You know, it takes it takes a lot to make the president of a country get involved, and now he's calling Putin. Well, you're doing fine as long as you're kind of staying as the undetected noise. But when the president is getting involved, you've made a mistake. I don't care how much gratis that country's leader gave you; you've now created a problem for him. Uh, and so there's actually been a shutdown on the larger attacks. We're not seeing as many 10 and $25 million attacks. They're doing smaller. At the same time, uh, the, the, you know, the world's kind of responded to ransomware. We're starting to arrest some of those ransomware guys, even in Russia, which is a cyber criminal safe haven. They arrested like eight or nine affiliates. And then we arrested some ransomware guys in Ukraine. So you're starting to see this fear consolidation of the industry with a smaller bucket of money. So what are they doing? Well, what would any business person do? What are the other revenue streams that I can do? You know, and how can I perform it? So I call that kind of ransomware 3.0. And then I kind of predict what ransomware 4.0 is going to be, which is 
they're going to then try to do it efficiently and maximize. They're going to see every victim as a potential bag of money and they'll start to optimize the process. Okay, we'll start out with, we'll do a business email compromise. We'll try to get money that way. We'll install some crypto mining Trojans uh, you know, at a slower rate so they don't detect this. Maybe we'll do some botnet rent, rent, you know, renting. Uh, we'll still, this data will still password from all the employees and we'll resell those on the market. We'll resell access to this company to other people that want to do things. And then when they finally detect us because they're monitoring emails, we'll go off and encrypt and, you know, and ask for a ransom. So I think that if you look at the, you know, the natural uh, progression of ransomware is that they're going to get more professional. Because let me say, a lot of these people think they're corporate people. They talk corporately. They talk about upgrade cycles and you know competition's good. But I think our feature set is really you know competitive, and I think we'll do good. You know, like even the rant when the Colonial Pipeline thing happened, that ransomware guy was like the ransomware leader. He was talking. He's like. You know, what we want to say, first of all, is that, you know, we, that was one of our affiliates and they went beyond our terms of agreement. And we'll let you know that we've cut them from our thing and we've updated our terms of service. And we want to let you know that we respect. And I thought, who am I listening to? Is this a ransomware leader or the head of Microsoft? I mean, it sounded like PR crisis management 101. Uh -huh. And then I thought the guy is the CEO. He's in charge of a multi hundred million to billion dollar company. He's probably been the CEO at some other company, and he just happens to be in this unethical criminal activity, but he is a CEO. He's got payroll to make. He's got people to bribe. He's got to get developers you know, in to help update his stuff. He's got to have network and distribution. These yeah. guys are corporate people. Right. Well, he doesn't pay a lot of taxes, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I always say, you know, like people are like, oh, they must be hidden. No, the number one ransomware leader that we have identified lives in Russia uh, in their main city and he drives a Lamborghini with the license plate of thief in Cyrillic. Wow. <laughs> like it's the it's the opposite of being hidden, right? And he he brags about his relationship with the FSB, you know, kind of the Russian uh, CIA. And you know, they're and they are they let me say this, they are paying taxes. I mean, that's one of the big things or, you know, North Korea does ransomware and stealing cryptocurrency to fund their nuclear uh, program and feed their citizens. It is a way that that country thrives. I mean, because of all the sanctions on them, they steal it. Uh, and, and anybody, that, if you're in uh, Korea, North Korea, if you're in Iran, if you're in Russia, if you're in China and you're bringing in revenue, you're bringing in revenue and, and tax structure. They're paying salaries. They're paying bribes. People are making money. Yeah. It's just not, they're probably not identifying that as their source of income. They probably got some other business they're running, I guess, like the meat business or something. <laughs>